welcome to the second session on evolution of information management systems. In the previous session, we discussed about some of the traditional information management architecture, such as the ones used for MIS, as well as your traditional data warehousing and business intelligence systems. In this section, we discuss the advent of big data and its de facto storage mechanism Hadoop. Talk about some of the eco applications of Hadoop that are used for acquiring, storing, and analyzing big data. The section concludes with a typical architecture for analyzing big data and how the traditional data warehouse and the modern day data lake work together to complement and supplement each other for creating an information management system of today. So what is big data? Well, we all know that big data has a bunch of V's attached to it. Some of them are volume, velocity, variety, veracity, and value. A subsequent slide will look into what each of these represent. Some of the modern day data sources that contribute to big data generation include cameras, mobile devices, the microphones, readers, scanners, scientific facilities, and the programs, software, as well as social media. All these and many more sources provide what we know today as big data. Coming back to the five V's of big data, velocity, we all understand, is basically the speed at which the data gets generated. In today's world, we have multiple petabytes of data getting generated every second, right? And the speed at which the data gets generated represents the velocity of big data. Volume, like I mentioned, multiple petabytes, of data per second all right so there is a huge volume of data that is getting generated from different sources and that constitutes the second v of big data volume variety is the kind of data earlier we worked primarily with structured data when we had rdbms as the de facto storage mechanism for structured data right now along with structured data we have semi-structured data as well as the unstructured data right so all these constitute variety as one of the v's of big data veracity basically means the reliability of the data and the trust that we can put on the data unfortunately the veracity is challenge where big data is concerned because we do not have control over the source of generation of the data when we are working with big data so it requires a lot of cleansing as well as thought as to which data we use for analysis and which data we discard value basically means the value that big data can bring to an organization right the we've realized that with the use of big data, most organizations have, what should I say, uh, become more insightful about their internal business and other processes, as well as they are now more aware of what their customers, consumers are thinking of the products and services that they are putting out into the market right so analyzing this data they are able to come up with customized solutions for their customers and other consumers so big data has brought in a lot of value to organizations who have learned to harness and use the same some of the real life use cases of big data would be uh, analyzing fraud okay so credit card fraud 
or any other different kinds of frauds even the fraud analysis that is being done for other uh, whether a certain authentication is a genuine authentication whether the enrollment of a certain person is a general enrollment or a person is trying to enroll and get a other number twice all this kind of fraud analysis and detection can be done using big data sentiment analysis is very important for any product or service companies because they would like to know what kind of uh, discussions are going on around any of the new products or services that they are brought into the market and for this they have to analyze big data to understand the customer sentiment around their products or services customer profiling again most organizations would like to profile their customers or create specific group of customers so that they can bring or provide more customized solutions for each group or demography of the customers again big data is what they analyze to do this customer profiling activities apart from that we know what recommender systems are right most e-commerce sites use some kind of a recommender system for doing cross selling and up selling of their products again they are heavily dependent on analyzing big data for creating their recommender systems real time data analysis for stock prices as well as attrition prediction for organizations attrition is a huge challenge for most organizations because it takes about three times more resources of financial uh, resources for bringing in a candidate from outside than to maintain a candidate who is already working within the organization so for doing this attrition prediction organizations do a lot of analysis on the candidates to try and understand who are the potential candidates who would be moving out of the organization so here are some of the real life use cases of big data there are many 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 more and you would come to know about them during the course of your studies i have touched upon a few here now we know what big data is let us try and understand what hadoop is at a very high level so hadoop basically is an open source framework for storing and processing big data on clusters of commodity hardware we know it was developed by these two gentlemen duck cutting and mike caffarella the data storage aspect of hadoop is done using a distributed file system hdfs full form of which is hadoop distributed file system and the data processing aspect of hadoop is done using a distributed programming paradigm called map reduce programming now hadoop's support for big data how does hadoop support big data why is it that we talk of hadoop and big data together well big data is being used by companies for storing large volumes of different kinds of data we we'll looked at the five b's right and the all this data needs to be processed in parallel as well because until and unless we process the data we are not able to extract information out of it so big data has very large online data storage needs and a capability to process the data in parallel well hadoop supports these requirements through hdfs and map reduce programming hdfs for data storage and map reduce for processing data in parallel large volumes of data in parallel most important one of the most important things of hadoop is since hadoop uses commodity hardware okay it drives down the cost you do not need extensive high end servers to create a hadoop cluster you can create a hadoop cluster using your commodity day to day hardware or machines thus we see 
that Hadoop is an ideal environment for supporting big data. The dual functionalities of Hadoop, HDFS and MapReduce are supported by your name node. There are two of them, active and standby. A bunch of data nodes, also called the slave nodes, and a secondary name node. Here is a pictorial diagram of a typical Hadoop version 2.x cluster. The master nodes are the name nodes. One of them is the active name node and the other is the standby name node. And the slave nodes are the data nodes. The secondary name node is not shown here. The secondary name node was more important in Hadoop 1.x because it behaved as a backup of the name node. But with 2.x, where we have active and standby name nodes, the secondary name node may be there, or you could create a cluster without a secondary name node itself. So the typical components of a Hadoop cluster would include your name nodes, the active and standby name nodes, the multitude of data nodes, and possibly a secondary name node. We've looked at a Hadoop cluster and how Hadoop supports big data. Here is some eco applications of Hadoop. Hadoop has a multitude of eco applications and developed for different uh, purposes. Each of these eco applications are built for uh, serving one particular aspect of data analysis or storage. Some of the eco applications of Hadoop that we see here is PIG which is a scripting language for data analysis on the flow. Hive, okay, it is, uh, what should I say, a data warehouse on top of Hadoop and it uses a SQL-like language for analyzing the data. We have HBase, a NoSQL database for storing big data. The columnar database, another NoSQL database, Cumulo, right? So on and so forth. We have Spark, which is a in-memory computational uh, engine on top of Hadoop. We we'll look at some of these in more detail in the subsequent slides. So now that we have Hadoop cluster, and we see we've seen some of the eco applications of Hadoop. How do we get data inside Hadoop? How do we move data into Hadoop? Well, one of the tools for doing that is Scoop. Scoop is basically a tool for transferring data between Hadoop and a relational database management system. Scoop can transfer data both ways, right? And it is used to populate tables in a Hive or HBase environment. Another tool is Flume. Flume, as the name suggests, the English meaning of Flume is basically a artificial water channel that is used in the logging industry for moving logs. In the Hadoop world, Flume is used for transferring log data into Hadoop. Log data from web servers, database servers, or any other servers. The log data can be moved into Hadoop using the tool Flume. 